So I'm just down here at the farm. Again, this is off the carry-on toboggan. Um, I was gonna modify this and just put the spring hitch on here and cut all this off, but I'm just gonna leave this as a spare hitch. Um, so the two inch cutoffs that I had from welding up the, uh, well, it was out of the scrap from a previous project. But that was a cutoff piece, so I shared that bolt pattern there to bolt it back on, but I wanted it 12 inches longer. This piece isn't 12 inches longer, but the spring hitch is gonna be a little bit longer. So I wasted a bunch of time making this. That's a half inch hole for the spring hitch to go in. And I was gonna get it in there like that, but it was a whole lot of extra cutting. And then I remembered I had inch and a half tubing from a project years ago that fits inside. So I had those as mating tubes for uh, adjustability on different projects. So now I've made this, got my half inch hole in there. So we're gonna weld all the way around there. And then I drilled three holes that I can plug weld the backside top, top and bottom. So that'll be in there good and strong. And then we just uh, put the assembly together. Could be a little tricky getting everything threaded that four inches, but that's what they make extensions for. And that'll be the new hitch for the carry-on. So it'll give me, it'll be a little bit easier to hook up because it'll be higher to the Scandic and Instead of having to drag the whole load to align a pin or something like that, I have two inches of movement in the hitch because of the spring. So it'll be way better to hook up when it's uh, full of weight. So we're just going to weld this up and grind her out, and that'll be it for this. Well, we just finished welding the four sides, three plugs on each side. We'll grind it all flat, take it home, finish it there. So we're back home now, and there it is all finished ground. Give a quick sand there with the mouse sander and a bit more grinding to clean things up. So it's all ready to go. Just gonna throw some silver wheel paint to add on for the winter rims. Hang this up here and give it a couple coats tonight. We'll install it tomorrow and see how it looks. So we're out in the garage here with the, we got the Scandic and the two carry-ons. So this is my new homemade uh, extension. I don't know how much I gained out of it. So the problem I was having is these carry-ons only have this natural uh, arch here based on this tubing that's been bent. And my height, I'm like 22 inches to my tongue. And when these are all loaded down, you're, uh, you're fighting all that. So I was hoping I'd gain so it was 10 inches on, that's a factory one. And we didn't gain a whole lot, 13 inches. Three inches, but it gives me some leverage to pick that up versus that. And it allowed me to uh, run this spring mechanism. Uh, so it's the same one that I had on the homemade groomer. Um, but on the inside here, uh, when I welded it up, I had an inch and a half square tubing that went this way, that got welded in, uh, versus on the snow groomer, that was a two inch chunk of steel. So I ended up using a three quarter nut out of the bolt bin as a spacer because there was only, say, two inches of thread on the end of this gold shaft, half inch shaft. So I got a washer, a spring, a washer, inch and a half tubing with a hole on either side wall. And there's a three quarter inch nut for spacer, a washer, the spring inside, another washer, a nylon nut that comes with it. And tomorrow I'm going to pick up a second nylon nut for this one and the one on the snow groomer to double knot them and the nylon. Uh, the manufacturer double knotted a lot of critical points on here and they were nylon, so I figured I'd do the same instead of having an issue out in the bush. Um, and then they gave a fresh coat on the factory hitch and now I still have this and it can sit underneath the passenger seat with me in case I have an issue and I'll carry 3 8 uh, hardware with me and uh, I have a spare hitch if there's a failure because you're dead in the water otherwise without this 
you can tow the strap, but if you get to a hill, it's just going to slide into you. So that one over there is stock. It mounts on the back of this guy for my tandem towing trains, set of B trains. But uh, yeah, that's how it ended up. I'll give you a close up of how it looks and one of the other repairs I did on this. And I managed to get uh, a snow shovel holder on this. I had it from my running AD50 and didn't think I had any more link pockets available for it, but I pulled it off, so I'll show you that. So this is a close up of the uh, factory hitch. I just welded a T-handle there with a nut with those uh, ribs on it. I'm not sure what that nut's called, but it's a clearance hole up top and then it's threaded in the bottom. So you had to have that perfectly aligned to get it uh, started. Like even now it's a little tricky and you don't have a load on it. Um, but when you spun out on a hill or an obstacle with a full load on it, you had to undo that, get the scandic out however necessary and then hook a kinetic strap around here and uh, slingshot your load up the hill and then try to get it realigned up to the hitch right there, which bending this up with the load and lining up those threads to thread it in tight was a kind of, it was a pain in the butt really. Um, but this one's still gonna hook into the back tongue, tongue there that you can see beneath the wall. So the repair I had to make with this one was it's just a pin that goes through holding that tongue piece in and there's a tack weld there and there. The welds had let go and the pin was just, uh, it was loose and could slide out. It never ended up coming out on me last year, but I got that fixed up. Here's a close up of the spring hitch. So it finished up pretty good actually. I took a little bit of pride in building this, painted it up, but uh, yeah, in theory you have two inches. They're stiff springs, but you can shove it in or pull it two inches without the whole load moving to try to align your hole, which should help. And it's got a nice R clip on this, it's spring loaded itself, supported on either side. It's a little lighter duty on this mechanism, but uh, we'll see how it holds up. And I'll have that one under the seat if I need it. But we'll see if we can get you in here for a view but you can't see everything but that big washer that it comes with actually takes up most of the room in that uh the idea of that square tubing and uh yeah there's not a whole lot of play so these little brackets here just uh link base plates uh and they were on my renegade that i had they just went through the tunnel wherever you needed them and you could mount link accessories. So I had this ax holder, but uh, I just found a spot for it because this multi-plate on the Scandix got link spots all over the place, not just the ones that are on the tunnel, like a typical 16 inch wide sled. So I found a spot there where it worked fine. And then either I bungee cord it or Velcro. I got both on there just to show you. That's all I've ever run for that. And then the shovel, I stick wherever and just have bungees all over. But I managed to get the handle holder that is part of that axle holder in a link bracket, like the one up in the corner. And then I just set it in there like that. It wiggles a little bit, but it can't really go anywhere when the pack out plate's on out back and it's sitting flat. So when I get grooming trail, I use that shovel a lot to fill in low spots and off camber stuff. So it's nice to be able to uh, on and off quickly with the shovel versus fighting with a couple uh, bungee cords. So that's pretty handy. The other thing that I'll show you here is, so for people that are interested to convert to Milwaukee pack out stuff, which is super handy if you already have some of that stuff, um, I wouldn't do what I did. I've since found other products, but I bought two of these multi-purpose plates, I think Skidoo calls them. So they are just intended for a one placeholder of the link brackets there. So I just measured it all out and sandwiched a piece of pressure treated plywood between the two because I couldn't get uh, any of the holes to line up on either uh, 
either setup. So I just use that as a, a mating plate. But now I am nearly three inches thick and you get all your weight higher. And these two brackets were not cheap. Um, the pack out plate wasn't too bad, but there's uh, companies out there that make uh, link to pack out plates um, that are much thinner and probably cheaper overall. So I would definitely go that way in the future. But since I have this, it's gonna it's gonna stay in the fleet. But yeah, you can get the, your weight lower to the ground. I get that three inches and then that two drawer uh, pack out. And then I have a bag on top that weighs probably 40 pounds with the winch and all that. I might buy a link to pack out mechanism to put my winch bag there instead get the weight a little lower but anyway it's always evolving and this link stuff's awesome uh pricey but awesome everything that clicks in just stays there well thanks again for watching against the grain living with jeremy moore um yeah a bit of a weird one just some ah what's this winter socks really uh we've had a ton of snow but none of it stays so we're at the end of january now and i still haven't been able to take a single trip in a material that's just been cutting trail and I don't know, I might get two, three weeks of hauling this year, which is going to be very busy and everybody else at work has holidays around that same time. So it's going to be a, a fight to get anything done. We might have to make an equipment change here to try to make progress at this outside of the winter time. Snowmobiling is just sort of my thing. So I wanted to do, do it in the winter time, but we might have to uh, change up the setup if we're going to get this project done. Here we are at the end of January and uh, I still have to cut the trail in again now. Let alone get enough snow, get it flat, level, packed, all the low little river crossings and stuff filled in with snow so that it's uh, easy with the heavy loads. But anyway, stay tuned for that stuff. <laughs>